Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Louis. I work in the Center for Advising Career and Student Success, and welcome to uh, today's live stream. Today is on uh, any questions about putting courses in your shopping cart, validating those courses, getting permission numbers. We know that uh, you have hopefully been doing this for a couple days now, and we want to answer. Let me mute myself. We want to answer any questions that come up, and we know uh, it looks like we already got some early birds that jumped in the chat and on the YouTube stream asking us questions. Uh, before I turn over to our advisors, two housekeeping notes. If you are watching this on YouTube, which you probably are, in the show notes uh, below the title, you'll see a link that says join our live chat, and you can click on that. Um, ask those questions in real time. We'll answer all the questions you have. You can ask questions more than once. Uh, everything is fair game. If you have any trouble using that, you can just comment directly on the on the YouTube page, and I'll be monitoring that as well. Uh, let me turn it over to Megan Jessica. Not Jessica Megan Gladys. Gladys. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Megan Gladys. Yeah. It's, Hi everyone. Know, I, My I name bet. is Gladys Cavadas, and I am the academic advisor for human communication majors and also for cinematic arts and technology majors. Hi everyone, I'm Meg Austin. I'm the academic advisor for biology, marine science, environmental science, technology and policy, and environmental studies. And today we're gonna be showing you how to, different ways how you can add classes to your shopping cart. Um, some of you may have your classes picked out already. If you don't, that's okay. But the next step after picking your classes uh, for what you're planning on taking in the fall is to start adding them to your CMS shopping cart. I'm going to start sharing my screen with you now to show you the first tool that we use. Okay, so I'm going to first log on to our uh, to your student center CMS, and that's I can do that by logging into my dashboard, which from any CSUMB page, you'll see a login button up here on the top. I've already logged in, but if you um, haven't already, you can just click the login. It'll say login instead of your name and then click to your dashboard and log in with your Otter ID and password. That's the, uh, that's the Otter ID is your, the first four letters of your last name plus four numbers. Once you've logged into your dashboard, you'll see this blue bar at the top and then you just click the CMS link, which will take you to your Student Center CMS, which will look very similar to this. So the first tool that we're going to talk about today of um, using that you can use to add courses to your shopping cart is called Schedule Planner. Schedule Planner is a really awesome uh, user-friendly tool that you can use to um, generate all the possible schedules you can have with your chosen classes. So if you have your list of classes that you want to take uh, in the fall semester and you just want to know what times work best with those classes, because you know, as you may know, that there are there could be multiple sections of the same class that you are planning on taking. Um, so the great thing about Schedule Planner is that you can just plug in, you know, list the, the three or four classes that you want to take, and you can generate all the possible schedules you can have with those chosen classes. Another great thing about Schedule Planner is that you can input breaks that you want to have in your schedule. So if you have to work or if you have other uh, responsibilities or extracurricular activities, or if you just don't want to have classes at certain times, you can plug in breaks in your weekly schedule where your classes will work around those breaks. So let's get started. From your Student Center CMS, under the Academics heading, you will see the Schedule Planner link right there. Click on that. And then uh, you're just going to follow these simple instructions by clicking here to enter into Schedule Planner. And some browsers will require that you disable any pop-up blockers. So just keep that in mind before, uh, when you're, as you're trying to get into Schedule Planner. Okay, so we're in Schedule Planner now. We want to make sure that the course status is open because you want to make sure that you're looking for classes that are uh, still have seats available in them. So that usually is the default setting. So you shouldn't have to mess with that once you first get into Schedule Planner. But I'm going to, just, going to start adding courses to Schedule Planner here. So I know I'm an incoming freshman, so I want to take just about three classes so I can get accumulated to campus and kind of just get adjusted. So I'm going to want to add HCOM 211, which is, uh, which is a class that fulfills oral and written communication requirement, an A1 GE. So my first course I want to add, uh, you can either, either search for a course by its subject. So um, HCOM 211, so selecting the HCOM. 
human communication subject and then the course number is 211 reading writing and critical thinking you can also search for a class by course attribute so you can search for classes based on what requirement it fulfills so you can search for a class that fulfills the art ge or the health and well-being general ed or the humanities that's another way you can search for classes in schedule planner but i always like to just do it by subject because if you already know what classes you're taking then it's pretty easy to search for them by subject so then I click add course to add that to my saved courses on the right hand side. Then my third or my second class I want to take is a start my language requirement. So I want to take Spanish. So I'm going to look for Spanish classes. Spanish and then I have not had a lot of uh, prior experience speaking Spanish. So I'm going to start at the beginning level beginning 101 Add that course. And then every incoming freshman has to take an FYS class. So I'm going to take FYS, first year seminar. I'm going to say philosophy of nonviolence, 143. And remember that every FYS class also fulfills a general ed requirement. I believe this FYS course that I selected fulfills the C2 humanities. So now that I have my courses that I want to generate schedules for, I'm going to hit the back button. And I also will have to work my first year at CSUMB. So I'm going to add in those breaks here on the right hand side. So I'm going to have to work from 5 p.m. until 10 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. You have to name your break as well. So I'm going to name it work. And then I'll click add break. So now I am ready to generate all the possible schedules I can have with my chosen classes that will also work around my break. So I'm going to go ahead and click generate schedules right here. Okay, so it generated 64 possible schedules that I can choose um, for my first semester at CSUMB. That is quite a few schedules. So if I want to narrow that down even more, I can add in more breaks. So I want to add another break that I, I don't want to have class from at lunchtime. So I'm going to say from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. on the same days. Let's try that. The same days that I have work. I'm just going to name this one no class. I want to remind anyone watching, uh, if you want to ask questions, you can jump in on our live stream. The link is on the show notes. And uh, you can also ask questions on the YouTube channel. So I'm going to generate my, my new break into my possible schedules here and see if that narrowed it down. OK, I narrowed it down a little bit, down to 56. But you can keep going with that and you know plug in mornings that you don't want to have classes, things like that, and to narrow it down even more. But so for now, we can just keep, we can scroll down and preview each schedule by kind of putting your mouse over the magnifying glass here and you can kind of get a look at what your weekly schedule would look like, including where your breaks are. The, the purple sections are your breaks and then your other colors are when your classes are. You can look at the more details of when each of those classes is uh, being offered during that day of the week by clicking view. And then you can see a detailed uh, overview of your weekly schedule with uh, your three classes, what times are being offered, where they're being offered. It'll tell you what building it is and what room it is. Um, and obviously the times and what days of the week. So let's say I really like, I, I like the idea of having my first year seminar class at 2 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays. You can actually lock that section of FYS into your schedule. And that means that that, that chosen clasp in that particular section will stay in your in your possible schedules and you, the rest of your chosen classes and your work schedule will work around that section so that will be a constant that will be a that will be always in any possible schedule you can have if we go back here and it actually didn't it didn't narrow down my options anymore because there was only one section of fys 143 being offered in the fall but if i were to say let's look into number schedule number one here Let's say I also wanted to lock this section of Spanish into my schedule. 
This will narrow down my options even more. So you look from 56 to eight possible schedules. And then we go back and you can see that my possible schedules went down to eight when I saved that particular section of Spanish 101. So what we can do next is compare up to four different schedules. So if I wanna tick these boxes here, let's say I really like schedules one through three and also seven, and I can click compare. And you can look at each different each schedule side by side to see to compare the different ones and see what times you'd have class and when you wouldn't. And then again to view the details, you can click open and it'll take you to that particular schedule. Okay, so let's say I love this, I love the look of this schedule. This is the one I want to pick for my uh, first semester at CSUMB. What you're ready to then to do is to hit send to shopping cart. And then you want to hit OK. And then it'll, you'll want to follow the instructions on the next screen, which will show you how to import those chosen classes right into your CMS shopping cart. So then you're ready to enroll on your particular registration day. Um, so basically, it's going to tell you to go back to your CMS Student Center. And we're going to click Course Enrollment. And it, you'll see an import button on the top here. It's not going to show me that now because this is a tested student environment. But just follow these instructions on the, on the screen here, and it'll tell you what to do. And you'll be ready to register on your day. And now I think Gladys is going to take over. Actually, if we want to take any, if there are any questions, we could take questions. Um, and then next, Gladys is going to talk about how to add individual courses to your shopping cart. Cool. We do have a couple. OK. So uh, Macy is in the live chat, and she is asking, should we start emailing professors and advisors for permission numbers right now uh, so that we have them when our registration date is, or do we wait until later? You can definitely start requesting permission numbers now. Uh, if we can show you um, also on our website that we have a page of where you can go to who to contact to request certain permission numbers, um, you can definitely start requesting them now if you know what classes you want to take and if you um, know that you need permission numbers for them, which we're going to go over to how to make sure that you need permission numbers for the classes you want to take because not all classes require permission numbers. Awesome. And then um, another question in the live chat. I still get red X's on some classes that I have met the prerequisites for. Is it because I don't have permission numbers yet or is that just an error? So that can mean um, that not all of your transfer credit report has been posted. So maybe uh, you took some courses over spring of 2016 and those grades, uh, maybe CSUMB hasn't received those transcripts just yet and hasn't posted them on, on your transfer credit report. So because of that, you're receiving those red X's. So it's good that you're already checking to see that. Um, so what you're just going to have to do is uh, contact the department or you know the specific person to get a permission number and then let them know that you've already met those prerequisites. And after that, you're you're okay to register and we'll show you where to enter the permission number. Awesome. Um, just want to remind people if you want to ask questions, just click on the link that says join the live chat in our show notes. Uh, you can also just comment directly on the YouTube page. Um, and we'll take a break uh, after Gladys gets done showing you the next step and we'll, sh we'll answer any others that come in. Great, so the next, um, the next thing we're gonna do is show you how to add courses um, to your shopping cart individually. Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say you just needed to, to add one or two classes um, mm -hmm. on here and you didn't wanna go through the entire thing of going through the schedule planner. There is a way that you can just add a course. Um, but first thing that we want to show you is this box right here. Mm -hmm. So this right here, it says enrollment date. So please make sure to pay attention to this. This will let you know exactly when you will be able to register. So for example, our, our test student, Monty Ray, um, Monty Ray was able to enroll in courses on April 21st after 1.15 p.m. as you can see that right here. So please make sure that you check for your registration date and time um, so that you know when you can register for classes. The other thing you wanna look at is this holds uh, account and make sure that 
you don't have any holds on your account that will prevent you from registering. Um, if you have an English remediation hold or a math remediation hold uh, on your account, that's just um, letting you know that you need to take English remediation or math remediation. Okay. All right. So let's get started. I want everybody to open up a new tab. And in this new tab, what you're going to do is type in uh, csumb.edu. So that's our homepage. And from there, you want to scroll all the way down, okay, all the way down to the links here at the bottom. This one right here is the one you're going to click on. It's called class schedule. So you're going to see that here. So this is our online schedule that anyone has access to. Um, even if you're not a student, you have access to this um, just to see it. So on the left-hand side, you can see um, all of the subjects. So you can search by the subject. And then on the right-hand side, you can search by the general education requirement. So as an example, let's say you already spoke to your advisor or you received an email from your advisor and your advisor uh, said, hey, you know what? You should probably take a G -E one course in your first semester. Um, so, and I'm just giving that as an example, okay? Um, so. Let's go ahead and click on general education area C1, the arts. And they said, take any approved course. So after looking through them, you realize that you really are interested in taking this movie mania class, um, music and film. So you can click on it and you can see the description on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you can see um, when it meets, where it meets and open seats total people enrolled in as of right now and maximum people that can enroll in the course um and then this is the number that is really important for us to know so this is the class registration number so what you want to do with this is copy it right and then we are going to go back to our student center page and you can see this link right here where it says enroll. You want to click on that. So because we already copied our number, our class registration number, all you need to do is paste it to this empty box right here. Click enter. And then the following screen will give us some information regarding the course. Okay. So Usually, um, so this course doesn't have any prerequisites, but in another course that we're going to add, you'll, you will see the prerequisites, but they will usually be listed here, okay? But this is just an example. You can see the title of the class. You can see if the class is open or closed. Um, this is where you would enter a permission number. So the permission number is um, not all courses require it, okay? This is just where you would enter it if the course does require a permission number. And the only way that a course will uh, require a permission number is if it has like instructor's consent um, or if it has a prerequisite and maybe um, you took a class at the local community college to satisfy that prerequisite, but the system just is not reading it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you might just need a permission number and you would enter it right there. So then what you wanna do is click on next and there you go. The course has been added to your shopping cart. Okay. Another one that we will want to um, add just to give you, uh, just so you could see uh, in regards to the permission number, um, will be a biology class. We're going to look at biology 300. Let's find that. All right. Section three. Great. So same thing, here's the class number, right? The class registration number, you want to copy it and you're gonna paste it to this box right here. Click enter. And this one, as you can see, it has all of the prerequisites. So this one requires you to be a junior or senior standing you need to have general education area A1, A2, and A3 satisfied. You need to have bio 211 and 211 lab. 
Bio 242. So there's a yeah. So there's a few things on here that will, that are are here as far as prerequisites. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the other thing that is here as well is a co-requisite. So what a co-requisite mean, means is that you will need to take a class at the same time as this one. So um, this one has a co-requisite of Bio 242. So that means that you will need to enroll in Bio uh, 300 and Bio 242 um, since it says that. Yeah, that's but, interesting. I thought that that might be a new change, but <laughs> we can if you have if you're happen to be a bio student watching this and you didn't take this class, we could I can talk to you about that later too. But mm -hmm. <laughs> but actually, and and a lot of the ones that will have co-requisites will usually be the science classes, and they'll mm -hmm. have it's it's usually a lab attached to it. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. just kind of pay attention for those. Um, as you're registering. So we would just click next, okay, to add the course to our shopping cart, and there you go. And once your registration day comes, you, all you need to do is uh, click on proceed step two of three, mm -hmm. and then you click on the next green button, and it'll say finish enrolling, and then that's how you enroll in the class. So the Another so a way that you can find out if you actually do need permission numbers um, and to make sure that you're just OK to add these courses. Let's say that I'm a student and I want to mm -hmm. take these two courses. I want to check to make sure that I'm OK to add them on my registration date, uh, which we can check that by validating your shopping cart, which we, val we go to the validate uh, option screen by clicking on the plan tab up at the top. Okay, so once we're in the plan tab uh, view of your shopping cart, then we'll wanna click the boxes that are next to each of the classes you're intending to add, and then just click validate. And this will take a couple of minutes, or hopefully not a couple of minutes, just a couple of <laughs> seconds. <laughs> when you guys are done, we got a couple more questions too. Okay, okay. We're, we're almost done. Okay, so this tells tells me some good information. One class, the CART 231 Movie Mania class, I'm okay to add. I have met those prerequisites and doesn't look like there's any time conflicts with the other classes I've chosen, so we're good. So with Bio 300, this test student obviously did not take the prerequisites of this class or it's not trying to add the co-requisite of this class. So you're gonna have a, a red X populate. Um, so in cases like this, if you know that you've taken the prerequisites of this course, maybe like Gladys mentioned at your other school, um, and that you do in fact have the correct, correct co-requisite along with your other courses, you're, try you're trying to add them all at the same time, then this red X may still appear because you took those prerequisites at another community college. But that that in that case, then you will just need to ask for permission number from the, the correct person, which we can actually show you that um, near the end after we take some questions of where you can find who to contact for specific permission numbers. Okay, so if there's anything else that, I think that's everything we wanted to cover with in terms of adding courses to your shopping carts and ways you can do that. So let's go ahead and take some questions. Okay, so. Christy in the live chat is asking, when is the registration date for incoming freshmen that do not attend or orientation? June 27th, Monday, oh. June 27th. Love it. And that starts June 27th, it might be a little bit uh, late, it might be the 28th, or actually, I take it back. It should all be the same day. Yeah, the floodgates are just gonna open up. Okay, uh, Omar in the live chat is asking, what if there is a class that is only available at a certain time and your break conflicts with this class? Will that conflict be listed? So if you're trying to, it won't let you generate that possible class and schedule planner if that's the case. Um, it won't give that specific section of a class as an option when you're trying to add that course and schedule planner if you have a designated date that, that directly conflicts, or sorry, a designated break that directly conflicts with that class offering. So that won't that class section won't even become an option. Um, or if that's the only section of a class that's being offered, then it then you will not be able to generate any schedules if you're trying to add that class and have that break at the same time. You may have to either pick a different class or adjust your break. Yeah. So so no, Omar, it's it, it's not gonna list uh, conflicts. It, it takes that into account. So it works it works good. 
Yeah. Okay, uh, on YouTube, Bruce is asking, how do I figure out which math and chemistry class I must take? Thank you for your specificity, uh, Bruce. So I'm joking because we need to know way more to be able to tell you the answer to that. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it sounds like if you're trying to take chemistry, um, you're probably a science major, so you probably are one of mine. Um, so it definitely depends on if you're a transfer or if you're a freshman. Uh, so it really depends on mm -hmm. what more information than that. So I could definitely help you. Um, Again, we can show you. You've received emails from me if you ha if you have declared a science major. Um, so check your emails for more information about that. But also, we'll show you where you can find our contact information, so you can uh, reach out to to me specifically if you have questions about that. If you're a science major. Okay. And um, and, and you should have received an email pretty much from all of your advisors by now, just letting you know um, mm -hmm. what courses or what tools uh, you can use in order for you to register for the right classes. And if you don't know, um, please go ahead and, and contact your academic advisor so that you're clear on that. One more thing since we just talked about email. Um, for everyone that is watching and will watch, uh, it's June 7th today, and everyone has emails that, that I checked this morning. So you all have official CSUMB emails, and we're not going to email anything but the CSUMB email going forward. You might get one last one of your application one just to tell you what I just said, that, that this is the last one. So uh, be aware, and, and you can access that straight for, from your dashboard as soon as you log in. There's a link at the top that says email. Okay, uh, one more in the live chat. Uh, my transfer credit report is only showing my credits for one of the community colleges I went to. The dashboard shows they received the transcript from both of the colleges. Any idea why? What that means is that it's just that the Office of Admissions hasn't uh, posted your transcript just yet. Um, so it might just take a little bit uh, for us to be able to see it in the system. So um, it also depends how long ago, excuse me, <clears throat> how long ago you submitted those transcripts because it does take them a while. They receive a mass amount of, um, of transcripts all at once. So you also have to give it a little bit of time for them to post every single um, transcript on your transfer credit report. But um, it also helps if you if you let your advisor know okay i took these courses at this community college or at this college um just so that they have an idea and if in case they you have a class that requires a permission number or anything like that um, you let them know and they will uh, let you know how to get that permission number great um speaking of which can we show them the website yes yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again with y'all. Oops. Sorry, got arranging my screen here. Okay. So we're going to go to by clicking from the class schedule, I'm just going to click on the Monterey Bay logo at the top left hand side here to go to CSUMB's homepage. To get to our website, I'm just going to go actually type in csumb.edu forward slash advising. So this is our advising office's website. Here you can find the uh, the under the guides and tools link, there should be information. Yep, the link on the left hand side here permission codes. This is where you can go to find your contact person. Uh, if you need to, if you need to enroll in a class using a permission number, remember that not all classes require permission numbers to make so make sure that you're validating the process that we showed you a few minutes ago that, that you're validating your intended classes in your shopping cart before requesting permission numbers. And on this page here, there's a lot of good information about how to draft your email to the particular advisor, staff member, or faculty member of who you're requesting your permission number from. Um, there's more instructions on how to validate here, um, and then more information about how to obtain the 
permission number, and then the contact list here, depending on what the subject of the class you're requesting for, and then the corresponding email. And I also wanted to show you um, our Meet the Staff link. So this is where all students can go to look and see who their professional advisor is um, right on this page. And you can find their contact information. As we scroll down, there's Chrissy Esmeralda, who's uh, not here any right now, but she'll be back soon. We have Carrie Bynum uh, filling in for the business advisor peeps. There's Gladys. So this is where you can find everybody who and where they're located and their emails and phone numbers. Anything you wanted to add, Louie or Gladys? Oops. Um, we got a ton of good videos on the guides and tools section too. Uh, yes. They're short videos. They're all, you know, more or less five minutes long. We have ones on how to use the schedule planner, how to register for classes if you're a freshman, if you're a transfer, um, a lot of good information there. So I'm going to turn you guys off as the presenter. Um, I guess the thing I wanted to wrap up with is your shopping carts are unlocked now and you have between now and the end of June to put courses in them. Um, get your permission codes. And we'd love for you to, if you're coming to orientation by the time you get here, to have a good idea of what classes you're taking. And that way, when you speak to advisors orientation, you know, we're, we'll kind of be talking the same language and not necessarily starting from scratch. We're going to do this same live stream uh, tomorrow and the next day. And uh, then after that, we are just going to be working in our offices. We'll take some, you know, phone calls or appointments. But uh, we're wrapping up here on the, the live stream process. So... If questions come up, you really want to be doing this this week so that in the next couple days you can get on here and ask us questions if you have any. Um, and that's what I got. Okay. So if there's no more questions, I don't see any more on the YouTube or on the live stream. Um, I'm going to end this. And if any come up, ask them on tomorrow's link and we'll make sure that we answer them. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.